hasn't been fired yet. And no, if he doesn't get fired today, he isn't getting fired. Good morning to you. Good Friday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Steelers. It comes your way bright and early every weekday. If you're into hockey and or baseball, I also offer Daily Shots of Penguins and Pirates where you found this. There's been zero, and I mean zero, word on Matt Canada's status over the course of this week, unless you count Mike Tomlin's somewhat blasé assessment of his work that he got better as the season went along. I guess in order to gauge what he meant by that, you'd have to figure out what he got better from. In other words, what was the baseline in the head coach's eyes? I try never in this role to uh, preemptively react to decisions that haven't been made yet. So what I'm not going to do, and and I don't think I've done this all week other than to reiterate that Canada should be fired, is come on here. It's an outrage that they haven't blah, 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 blah. They haven't made a decision yet for me to either be tickled or peeved or whatever it would be. They just haven't. When they do, I'll have the reaction that I have. For now, though, for today, I'm going to share with you a general thought that I've kind of accumulated over the past few weeks of being around this football team and talking to these guys, particularly the younger guys on offense, and that is this. They believe in themselves. They believe that they've been able to take charge of their own situation in a way. Don't misunderstand that. I'm not talking about some goofy mutiny or something like that. I'm talking about looking adversity in the face, to borrow one of Tomlin's favorite recent sayings, and smiling through it. They did that. The credit for that goes principally to Najee Harris. He and I had an extensive talk about this a couple of weeks ago in Charlotte. He really let out some of the the feelings that he had around the bye week, how frustrated he was uh, in not pointing fingers or anything, just how frustrated he was with his own play, with the inability to form a chemistry with the offensive line. And he talked without giving himself a sliver of credit about some of the stuff that happened. And I can tell you from talking to other guys that they pointed back to 22. He was the one that made that happen. This is a younger group that's dynamic, that's fun, but also that's talented and knows that it's talented. And that's a really cool place to be. Because if you get along, and these guys apparently do, and you have a singular mindset that we're going to do whatever it takes in order to succeed, which, of course, in the National Football League means winning games, you can really go places. They know that, and they deserve the very best that management can provide to them. What can you expect at Point Park University in downtown Pittsburgh? Respect Rigor, relevance, that's the Point Park pledge. You'll be treated with respect while being challenged and supported academically to graduate with career-ready, relevant skills. Visit pointpark.edu to learn more. For management to do right by this group that they've built, to their credit, and also to the credit of Kevin Colbert and others, they've got to have in place A coaching system, a coaching mechanism, and a coach in whom they believe. They believe a billion percent in Tomlin, so get that one out of your head. They don't believe. And contrary to some public things that some of them have said with the cameras rolling, in Canada, at all, they played nice about it. They stopped wagging fingers about it at around, what was that, around the mid-season point? Like, well, the same period, the bye week. You stopped hearing players talking about this and that and scheme and and everything else and all these other hints. Uh, Deontay Johnson threw out a couple, but that's kind of who he is. And since Mitch Trubisky wasn't in, he wasn't really there to throw the hints that he'd been throwing 
about Canada when he was starting. So who else was going to do it, right? Kenny wasn't going to do it. George Pickens threw his fit the one day on the field, throw me the ball, throw me the ball, throw me the ball, but that wouldn't necessarily be aimed at the coordinator. You never know who somebody's saying that to. But behind the scenes, away from those rolling cameras, these younger players want a different coordinator. I would certainly hope that over the course of this week, which began with exit interviews for the players, and then it gets around to the coaches later in the week, that's that's the way uh, this sort of week tends to roll. Deal with the players, then deal with the coaches. Everybody gets evaluated. Everybody knows where they stand with Tomlin on their way out the door. And that's maybe the one and only reason that I've got optimism that the Steelers will do the right thing in this situation. Because Tomlin, he doesn't just encourage. He requires players to be open, to say what's on their minds, uh, to not worry about stepping on his toes or anyone else's. Now, does he like it in a general setting when he has to hear a player complain about a coordinator or positional coach or whatever? No, because he sees it, and correctly so, as disruptive toward the process. But the process is now over, and he wants to hear what they have to say. And my feeling is, if he hears what they really have to say, as I've been able to on more than a few occasions over the last few weeks, then he'll do the right thing. He'll do the right thing. I think. I hope. I don't know. We'll see. Like I said, I'm not going to sit here and get preemptively angry or anything else like that. Let's see how it goes. When we come back, J1Q. time for just one question and that's brought to you always on this program by the personal injury law firm of luxembourg garbage kelly and george lgkg they represent people who are hurt in car accidents who need assistance with workers comp and medical malpractice claims the attorneys at lgkg have been designated super lawyers capital s capital l for the past 15 years and yes that is a real thing the super lawyer designation is reserved for the top five percent of all attorneys in Pennsylvania. Learn more about them at lgkg.com or by calling 888-842-5454. Today's J1Q comes from Jeff, who asks, DK, what do you think about letting Brian Flores leave? He's the first person who made an actual adjustment when he did so against Baltimore's offense to run a 6-2 to stop the run. I, I get that he'll leave at some point soon to take a head coaching opportunity, but do you think it's worth keeping Terrell Austin as the defensive coordinator just because he's a Tomlin guy? I'll tell you this, Jeff. I never got the sense that someone else was the de facto coordinator. I really didn't. I did get the sense that there were three individuals intensely involved in the defensive planning, the defensive scheming, and yes, to what you referenced, the defensive adjustments. And yes, it was Flores who came up with the idea in facing the Ravens to have Mark Robinson out there, to have uh, DeMarvin Leal out there, even though, as we saw the following week, uh, and particularly in in, uh, Robinson's case, he's not ready for prime time on a lot of different levels. But they got the job done from the team standpoint, from the defensive standpoint, they got the job done. And even John Harbaugh, after the game, publicly lamented that the Ravens people didn't adjust to what the Steelers had done. And yeah, that was Flores. That was unquestionably Flores. But let's not over-dramatize or over-narrative this either. The Steelers were not a very good Uh, run defending team until the past few weeks. And even then, when they ran into a couple of teams that could really run on them, 
those teams for the most part did. Not all of them, but some did. Atlanta did. The Ravens did in the first meeting. And let's also keep in mind that Flores' primary responsibility with his defense was the group that I think we can all agree was the weakest on the roster overall. If you want to just say, well, that's because Devin Bush stinks or because Robert Spillane can't cover or Miles Jack got hurt or whatever, all of those things are accurate. However, to repeat, that was his main thing. Could he get something out of the inside linebackers? The answer to that overwhelmingly was a no. So another thing worth mentioning here is that assistant coaches – uh, positional coaches, uh, even defensive assistants, even players will contribute to something as it's related to schemes. In the Tomlin environment, as I was kind of referencing in the opening segment, he wants to hear what people have to say. He wants as many voices, as many hands in the pile, to use another Tomlinism, as he can have. Do you think that he's sitting in a room, for example, with... Cam Hayward, you know, sitting at one of those desks like a classroom and doesn't want to hear what Cam has to say on a given situation when Cam was in the most recent meeting with that particular opponent right there at field level and Cam has the 13 years of experience and he's really, really smart and everything else. And you're just going to say, no, 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 listen to us, Cam. It just doesn't it, it doesn't lend itself toward an all-in kind of culture. So to try to to get to your question here, I'm not ready to go jumping off a bridge if the Steelers lose Flores, okay? Um, I'd have felt a lot better about him and what he could do for this team if I'd seen with my own eyes a more direct impact that he'd have had. Uh, I didn't. I didn't. I understand what he achieved elsewhere. I understand and happen to agree with you that he remains on a path provided he and the NFL can get through their legal issues to becoming a head coach again somewhere. But I'm not sure that I look at him and think, wow, if if he leaves, oh, no, it's the end of the world. Terrell Austin was promoted to defensive coordinator. The Steelers had a pretty nice year defensively if you look at it overall and especially from the standpoint of them getting better in the second half. And I'm just not going to, you know, go haywire over the inside linebackers coach leaving because that's, that's what he was here. That's what he was here and didn't really get much in the way of results. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everyone listening to Daily Shot of Steelers. If something happens with Canada in one direction or the other, I will drop an additional bonus daily shot of Steelers as you expected I'd do anyway just letting you know thanks so much for listening